pushing on. Despite the global condemnation on the latest attacks on Rafah, Israel does not show any signs of slowing down its onslaught into the region. Battling the blaze Heat waves across India are now turning to raging forest fires as the rising temperatures cause volatility in multiple regions. Curtain call The theatrics that was Trump's hush money trial draws near close as the jury prepare to deliberate following some impactful closing arguments. And row for a gator. It may not be the Titanic, but these boats are sure to leave just as good for an impression with their creativity. All that and more as World News Tonight starts right now. This is Avadarana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here's Vinuth Varnasuriya. Good evening, you are joining us on World News Tonight. We have a number of stories to update to you tonight this evening and we start off with the Israel-Palestine conflict. White House spokesperson John Kirby has said the US does not believe Israel has launched a full-scale invasion of Rafah in the southern Gaza. This comes as displaced Palestinians in Rafah made their way through mangled tents and scattered belongings after an early morning Israeli airstrike killed Palestinians sheltering there, according to the Gaza official heads. Displaced Palestinians in Rafah made their way through mangled tents and scattered belongings on Tuesday after an early morning Israeli airstrike killed Palestinians sheltering there, according to Gaza health officials. We want to go, but we don't know where to go, says Manel Tembura. They told this was a safe place. Israel's military denied striking a tent camp west of Rafah on Tuesday after Gaza Health Authority said Israeli tank shelling had killed more than 20 people there. Witnesses told tanks had advanced to the heart of Rafah for the first time during Israel's three-week-old assault on the southern city. The latest bombardment comes days after an Israeli attack set off a fire at a Rafah tent camp that killed at least 45 people. The incident sparked global condemnation and calls for the implementation of a world court order for Israel to stop its assault. Israel said it had targeted Hamas commanders and had not intended to cause civilian casualties. This is a devastating incident. An Israeli army spokesperson said the military was investigating the possibility that munitions stored near a compound targeted in Sunday's airstrike may have ignited the blaze. Our munition alone could not have ignited a fire of this size. Meanwhile, in a diplomatic move purportedly aimed at speeding up efforts towards a ceasefire, Ireland formally recognizes the state of Palestine. Spain, Ireland and Norway officially recognized a Palestinian state. Spain's Prime Minister Pedro Sanchez said the country is recognizing a unified Palestinian state, including the Gaza Strip and the West Bank, under the Palestinian National Authority, with East Jerusalem as its capital. The recognition of uh, Palestine is not against anyone, least of all Israel. This decision reflects our absolute rejection of Hamas. Israel says it wants to root out Hamas fighters holed up in Rafah and rescue hostages it says are being held there. According to the UN's Palestinian refugee agency, UNRWA, around a million people have fled the Israeli offensive in Rafah since early May, many of them repeatedly displaced by shifting waves of the war. Israel's assault on Gaza began after the October 7th Hamas-led attacks that killed around 1,200 people and saw more than 250 hostages seized, according to Israeli tallies. More than 36,000 Palestinians have been killed in Israel's offensive, according to Palestinian health officials. And with the urge for peace, UN Under Secretary General for Peace Operations said China has played a significant constructive and helpful role in supporting the United Nations peacekeeping operations. China is also hosting leaders if multiple African nations for lengthy talks on the partnerships. Lacroix made the remarks a day ahead of the International Day of United Nations Peacekeepers. The senior UN official also appreciated China for its financial personal support for the world's only truly universal global organization. The UN Under Secretary General also expressed his hope that the UN can strengthen cooperation with China to explore the use of more advanced technologies such as unmanned aerial systems in future peacekeeping missions. 
China rolled out the red carpet for Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi at a welcome ceremony in Beijing. The Egyptian president is in Beijing on a state visit and is expected to attend the China Arab States Corporation Forum. Meanwhile in the region, Taiwan passed a controversial reform package pushed by the opposition despite days of street protests against the law, which will give lawmakers more oversight over the government. Taiwan passed a controversial reform package pushed by the opposition on Tuesday, despite days of street protests against the laws, which will give lawmakers more oversight over the government. The reforms give lawmakers the power to ask military, private companies and individuals to disclose information deemed relevant by parliamentarians. They also criminalize contempt of parliament by government officials and require president to give regular reports to parliament and answer lawmakers' questions, which would be a first for Taiwan. The ruling Democratic Progressive Party, or DPP, opposed the law but didn't have the numbers to block it. Lawmakers of the DPP were booing as the laws passed. They said the reforms were forced through without proper consultation and their content was either vague or an overreach of power. Outside parliament, thousands of people protested. Some shouted, refused Chinese political interference as the changes are seen by some as a move favoring China. The protests have been taking place against the backdrop of broader concern about efforts by China to influence the island's politics. China views Taiwan as its own territory and denounces its new president Lai Qingde as a separatist. Lai rejects Beijing's sovereignty claims, saying only the island's people can decide their future and has repeatedly offered talks. The protests demonstrated the intense political atmosphere Lai faces. Lai won the presidency in the January elections, but his party lost its majority in parliament. Taiwan's main opposition party, the Kuomintang, along with the small Taiwan People's Party, together have the most seats. And over in neighboring India now. Authorities in India's Jammu and Kashmir state battle to control forest fires as the country grapples with unusually high temperatures this summer. Fire control units have been set up at various locations in the northern India to tackle any new fires that break out. India's meteorological department issued a red alert for several parts of the country's northwest. Warning of a severe heat wave a day after parts of the capital daily recorded their highest temperature ever at almost 50 degrees Celsius. Billions of people across Asia, including India's neighbor Pakistan, have been experiencing a hotter summer this year. A trend international scientists say has been worsened by the human-driven climate change. Last night, residents across South Korea were startled with receiving an emergency disaster text message which read that objects suspected to be leaflets sent by North Korea had been found in the area. Over 100 balloons suspected to be filled with waste and attached with excrement have been found. The South Korean military has reported on Wednesday morning that around 150 balloons suspected to have been sent by North Korea have been found nationwide including in Seoul, Gyeonggi-do, Gangwon-do and the Jeollado provinces. Military officials say the balloons have bags attached to them, suspected to be excrement and trash. The Joint Chiefs of Staff said that North Korea's actions clearly violate international law and pose a serious threat to the safety of South Korean citizens. It added that all responsibility lies with North Korea. The military also warned North Korea to immediately cease its inhumane and low-grade actions. Furthermore, the South Korean military says that it is closely cooperating with relevant agencies, including the Ministry of the Interior and Safety and the United Nations Command, to ensure the safety of the country's citizens. Some of the objects were first discovered on Tuesday night and were suspected to be North Korean propaganda leaflets. The Joint Chiefs of Staff asked local authorities to send nationwide emergency safety alert text messages to certain areas in Gyeonggi-do and Gangwon-do provinces. It urged the public not to touch any suspicious objects and to report them immediately when found. In collaboration with the police, the military is collecting the fallen balloons and whether propaganda leaflets are attached is being verified. Such balloons sent by North Korea can cause damage in residential areas and also airports and highways. In 2016, there were incidents where vehicles and the roofs of homes were damaged. 
On Sunday, North Korea warned of retaliatory action against the distribution of anti-Pyongyang leaflets in border areas by North Korean defectors and conservative activists in South Korea. North Korean authorities stated through its state media that waste paper and trash will be sent to border areas and central parts of the country, and South Korea will see how much effort it takes to clean it up. It's a much-awaited moment as polling stations open up in South Africa in an election that looks to set a result in a political shift in a country that has been dominated by a single party since the end of the apartheid. Voting was underway on Wednesday in South Africa's most competitive election since the end of apartheid. Opinion polls suggest the ruling African National Congress is heading for a first ever loss of its parliamentary majority in 30 years of government. The significance of the day is not lost on first-time voter Naledi in Cape Town. I understand that it's a very <laughs> important decision to make. So yes, I'm excited but very nervous because it is a big decision. Yeah, 30 years of democracy is a very long way that we've come. So I just want to continue to help our country get to a better place. If the ANC does fall short of 50% of the vote, then it will need to make a deal with one or more smaller parties to govern. Opposition parties in this vote include the pro-business Democratic Alliance, the Marxist Economic Freedom Fighters and the newly formed MK Party, led by former President Jacob Zuma. Voters are electing assemblies in each of South Africa's nine provinces and a new national parliament, which will then choose the next president. The ANC is still expected to pick up the biggest share of votes. And that means incumbent President Cyril Ramaphosa is likely to stay in office unless he faces an internal challenge. However, this election does look set to mark a major political shift in a country that has been dominated by a single party for decades. The ANC's gradual fall from grace has been driven by dissatisfaction over high rates of unemployment and crime, frequent power blackouts and corruption in party ranks. More than 27 million South Africans are registered to vote and the Electoral Commission is expected to start releasing partial results within hours of polling stations closing. Let's take a short commercial break, mobile news on the other side. Welcome back. Russian President Vladimir Putin warned West that the NATO members in Europe were treading a thin line by proposing to let Ukraine use Western weapons to strike deep inside Russia, which he said could trigger a global conflict. Vladimir Putin warned the West on Tuesday that NATO members in Europe were playing with fire by proposing to let Ukraine use Western weapons to strike inside Russia. While on a trip to Uzbekistan, the Russian president told reporters on Tuesday that such strikes could trigger a global conflict. Putin also emphasized that many NATO member countries have small land areas and dense populations, which was a, quote, factor that they should keep in mind before talking about striking deep into Russian territory. NATO Security General Jens Stoltenberg recently told The Economist that alliance members should let Ukraine strike deep into Russia with Western weapons a view supported by some NATO members. Here's French President Emmanuel Macron following a joint security session in Germany on Tuesday. Les missiles. We tell them, we're supplying you with weapons, but you can't defend yourselves. We stay exactly within the same framework. We think that we should allow them to neutralize the military sites from which the missiles are fired. German Chancellor Olaf Scholz said he agreed with Macron and that as long as Ukraine followed international law and respected the conditions given by countries that supplied the weapons, it was allowed to defend itself. The deadliest land war in Europe since World War II is escalating into what diplomats say is its most dangerous phase to date. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky recently shited Ukraine's Western allies for not providing enough military support to rebuff Russian attacks and for prohibiting Ukraine from using Western-provided weapons to strike missile launchers inside Russia. Russia's recent advances have triggered a debate in the West about what else it can do after giving Kyiv hundreds of billions of dollars in aid, weapons and intelligence. The United States has so far not gone as far as some European allies. 
Here's U.S. National Security Council spokesman John Kirby on Tuesday. We're aware of the interest that President Zelensky has expressed in this regard. I would tell you that uh, there's uh, no change to our policy at this point. We don't encourage or enable the use of U.S. supplied weapons to strike inside Russia. Kremlin officials say Moscow's patience is wearing thin after repeated Ukrainian attacks on Russian cities, oil refineries, and, in recent days, even against elements of its nuclear early warning system. And to further solidify support for Ukraine, U.S. top diplomat Antony Blinken is in Moldova. The Europe tour is expected to see progress being made on ammunition and fiduciary support for Ukraine. For more on this, we have other Delano World News special correspondent Minoli Sagaria from Kursk in Russia. Minoli, what's the situation? Yes. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to arrive in the Moldovan capital, Chisinau, the first stop of a brief European tour, during which he will aim to solidify Western support for Ukraine across NATO allies and neighboring countries. The U.S. top diplomat's trip comes as Ukraine is trying to fend off intensifying Russian attacks in the East and as President Vladimir Putin warns that allowing Kyiv to use Western weapons to hit inside Russia would trigger a global conflict. In Chisinau, Blinken will meet with President Maya Sandu and other senior officials at a time when U.S. officials say the country faces Russian influence operations. Back to you. Thank you. And that was Adha Dhrana World News Special Correspondent Minoli Sagaria joining us from Kursk in Russia. Former President Donald Trump left a New York courthouse after lawyers made their closing arguments in a hush money case. Prosecutor Joshua Stingless said a $113,000 payment that has ensured porn star Stormy Daniels would not discuss an alleged sexual encounter was a part of broad effort to bury stories that might have damaged his first house bid. A claim that Trump's legal team strongly denies. For more on this, we have other than world news special correspondent Nicola Senaratna joining us from New York in the United States. Nicola? Yes. The defense and prosecution delivered closing arguments in Donald Trump, historic New York criminal hush money trial as both sides made final pitches to the 12 person jury before they are expected to begin deliberations. After the defense tried to shift blame from Trump to Michael Cohen, the prosecution used its closing argument to cut down their claims and walk the jury through documents that allegedly tied the former president to the hush money scheme. Actor Robert De Niro slammed Trump as a clown who is bent in destroying American democracy outside the New York City courtroom. Trump has pleaded not guilty to the 34 felony counts for falsifying business records and denied the affair with Daniels. A felony conviction of a former president and presumptive GOP nominee would be unprecedented. Back to you. Thank you. And that was Adha Dhrana World News Special Correspondent Nikola Senaratna joining us from New York in the US. And on the road to the White House tonight, new polls have found that two out of three Americans can say the concern that political violence could follow the November 5th election rematch between the Democratic President Joe Biden and his Republican predecessor Donald Trump. The survey of 3,934 U.S. adults found widespread worries that the U.S. could see a repeat of the unrest that followed Trump's 2020 election defeat, when the then-president's false claim that his loss was the result of fraud prompted thousands of followers to storm the U.S. Capitol. Some 68% of respondents to the online poll, including 83% of Democrats and 65% of Republicans, said they agreed with the statement that they were concerned that extremists will resort to violence if they are unhappy with the election outcome. Overall, 15% of respondents disagreed and 16% were unsure. The poll also found that Republicans harbor more distrust in fairness of U.S. elections than Democrats. Only 47% said they were confident that the results of the November election will be accurate and legitimate, compared with 87% of Democrats who expressed confidence.
welcome back the heart will go on but this tiny titanic couldn't stay afloat in the competition enthusiastic participants in the key west florida race homemade boats in the 33rd annual schooner wharf minimal regatta spectators cheered as competitors navigated their vessels towards the finish line trying to avoid overturning or sinking the boats made from plywood and duct tape could use corking but encourage creative costumes they even showcased imaginative vessels including a mini pirate ship with a mermaid figurehead and a replica of the titanic that quickly capsized awards were given speed design costume sportsmanship and the least seaworthy boat Well, that is all the stories we had to report to you tonight on World News. Tune in again tomorrow for more key updates from across the globe. Until then, thank you for watching. Have a good night.